Hey, how you doing? Scotty from Scott's Bass Lessons again. Hope you're well. If you haven't checked out Scott's Bass Lessons before, make sure you do so straight after this lesson because there is tons and tons of videos just like this one, all for free. So check them out. In this lesson, I'm going to follow on from last week's lesson. And in last week's lesson, we were discussing the different fingerings of the major scale and we were also discussing how to get them into your playing, how to make practicing scales musical, which is, you know, it's the most important thing. You can learn scales all day, but without making them musical and learning how to put that into your practice time, you're never going to be able to remember them or use them properly within your playing. So we looked at the C major scale. If you haven't seen the tutorial I'm talking about, by the way, there'll be a link to it on this video somewhere. So click it and you'll go straight there. So we looked at the C major scale. That was the second finger position. The first finger position was there, and the little finger position. there and basically we went through back and forward looking at the different positions talking about how it's really important to be able to visualize these patterns on your bass and then you'll be able to move freely between each of the positions and you're aiming to have a, a mapped out visualization of the fingerboard when you're playing it that's what you that's the aim okay you aim to map it out so you just look down and you can see all the notes that are within any chord we were talking about c major so that would mean all these notes and using just the different positions of the major scale and learning in different fingerings to be able to do what i've just done there now in this uh, in this lesson, we're going to do it in the key of B flat. I thought we'd change it up a bit. You know, it makes sure you, you know, you're learning your positions for different major scales, not just one, which was in the key of C. So B flat major, we're going to be doing it. In. And again, as always, the backing track. If it's if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link below, and it'll take you straight to the page um, where this, where you'll see this video lesson, and you can download the backing track straight underneath the video. It will say something like download backing track or something along those lines anyway yeah so what what this lesson's about is getting patterns into your playing and i'm not talking about licks licks and patterns get confused regularly a pattern is something like it could be a pattern in thirds and that's what we're going to be looking at this week we're going to be looking at three different patterns a pattern in thirds is something like I'm sure you can sing it. Give it a go. Now it's really important that we have these patterns in our playing because without them, all melodies basically are constructed of intervals. And it just so happens that these were intervals of thirds. So when I'm improvising a solo or a melody, I'm using these kinds of patterns within my improvisation to to give it some sort of, to give the phrasing um, some sort of continuity. So every phrase joins to the next phrase, that kind of thing. For instance, if we were just zooming up and down a scale all day, It's a bit boring, a bit too too linear. What intervals do when we're using them, like thirds, they give it a bit more depth. So for instance, I could play a linear line and then some thirds. Just 
gives it a bit bit more body, yeah? Again, I'll play another linear line. There, putting more thirds in. So this is the first pattern that I'm gonna show you. And then we're gonna try and fit it in with our soloing. So the first pattern in the B flat major, second finger position. That one is B flat, D, C, E flat, D, F, and think about them in groups of two notes. So you're going Buddha, Buddha, D, F, E flat, G. So played like that, it would be Buddha, 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 Buddha. Can you see, and when you're playing this, make sure you're looking at the major scale, you're seeing this pattern within the major scale. without any gaps. Back down. Now it sounds a bit like an exercise played like that. But let's listen to the backing track and see how I fit it in with the actual Solo. Okay, linear. Linear. Thirds. Linear. Thirds. Arpeggio. Thirds. Linear. Thirds. Linear. Arpeggio again. Thirds. See how I'm fitting in? I'm using it to link up the linear lines. I'll play a linear line, then I'll play the third pattern, a linear line, a third pattern. And again, once more. Thirds. Linear. Thirds. Linear. Thirds. Ah. It's hard to say it and play it. Thirds. Now, let's look at the second pattern. The second pattern is up three of the, of the major scale, and then back to the start. Then the, up the next note. Then the next note. So we've got B flat, C, D, B flat, Think about this in um, one, two, three, four, in groups of four. One, two, three, four. Then the next one, C, D, E flat, C, Buddha, D, D. The next one, D, E flat, F, D. Next one, E flat, F, G, E flat. And obviously that carries on. Now again, I'll play linear lines and then I'll start dropping onto that pattern. Now I'm not always starting on the B flat, I could be. Um, here I fit it in there, 
Let's try that. Linear. Pattern. Linear. Pattern. Now the next pattern and final pattern we're going to learn is a sax plays. Sax plays love this pattern. I'll play it for you fast and then we'll slow it down. And again. Slowly. B flat, D, B flat. One, two, three. Think about it in groups of three. Next one, D, E flat, D. Next one, D, F, D. Next one, E flat, G, E flat. So all these patterns I've been showing you are based around thirds. F, A, F, G, B flat, G, A, C, A, B flat. And again. So with these patterns, I can either start a line off with them, a phrase, I could start it off with the pattern, or I could finish it off with the pattern, or I could have it within the middle of the of the phrase. Does that make sense? So what I'll do here, I'll just I'll explain. I'm gonna start it off with a pattern and then I'll end and then I'll go into a linear type line. Okay, so I'll start off with the pattern, then into a linear type line. Two, three, four. Again, uh, now I'll start off with a linear line and then I'll drop onto the pattern and then I'll finish off with a linear line again. Okay, two, three, four. So that was kind of sandwiched between two linear lines. I had linear line, the pattern, and then the linear line. Now I'll just play a linear line and have the pattern on the end, okay? Two, three, four. Now let's hear it with the backing track. So hopefully 
be able to see there how I'm sorry how I'm kind of weaving in and out and obviously the end goal is being able to use all of these patterns together which is what I'm going to demonstrate now I'm going to use the first pattern then the second pattern and then the final pattern all within the improvisation let's take a look at that Hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, if you haven't been to Scott's Bass Lessons before, get straight over there now, check it out, download this backing track that's free with this lesson um, straight from the link below this video. And other than that, take it easy, get in the shed and make sure you click like in a bit. Thank you.